Yo, we're While She Sleeps. I'm Aaron. I'm While She Sleeps. And you're listening to- Shout out! Hello everybody, it's Jonathan from Shoutler TV. I'm happy to sit here with Aaron and Shaw from While She Sleeps. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, you're currently on tour in Europe, which lead the way to uh, your new record, So What, which is released on the 1st of March. Are you excited about it? Very yes, excited. Very it was a long road to get the album finished and to where we are right now. I'll start with you. I'm very excited. I'm also very excited. Me too. <laughs> Um, yeah, your tour ends on the 1st of March with a big sold out show at the Roundhouse in London. Yes, now sold out. And you are performing uh, with a choir. Mm -hmm. Is it the first time you're doing this? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, so the choir, like, got introduced when we was, like, writing the album and, like, doing the, the choruses and stuff. Um, and there was originally only supposed to be on, like, a few little sections, but... The sing-alongs and the choruses ended up being so kind of catchy and so like anthemic. The choir ended up being on like pretty much all of the songs. So, and um, the roundhouse has like lots of seats. So like for the just as like a little selling point, we thought wouldn't it be great to have the choir to come with us. So that's how it came about because they just sound so great on the choruses. So aesthetically, it looks like you should have a choir in there. Yeah. So why not? And but so. you are, are playing the same set as on the, um, yeah, the tour. Yeah. And yeah. okay, um, yeah. For so what you uh, work together with Spine Farm um, with the release, uh, and you're not releasing it uh, completely on your own like you mm -hmm. did with You Are We. How did this come about? Uh, well, it, it's kind of. Oh, sorry. I thought, <laughs> you, I, thought you, I thought you had nothing, so I was gonna. No, no, you, you can go if you want. Um, well, like with You Are We, we did it independently because we didn't work well with major labels last time and we felt like the small fish in like the in the big um, big pond or whatever whatever the analogy is. So um, yeah, we felt very underserved by it. So we decided to do that with You Are We and, in, and it's amazing. It's what's gained us a lot of success, you know, um, that we have today and what gave us so many opportunities for this next record. But there was so much fucking work that I had to go into like You Are We. Like we had to put in like, all the groundwork, like, you know, the... Yeah, all the DIY items that we did, we literally put in like weeks on end, just like, it felt like we were working in a factory at one point, just like spraying shit. It so great, but it was so fucking draining, do you know what I mean? So much work. So um, when it came to the, the new album um, and Spine Farm approached us, um, they they came to us and we and was like, you know, you're going to maintain all the control. You know, there's nothing going to change. We want to brand it Sleeps Brothers and, and nothing has changed, but we just felt like with this new album, if we were really going to like achieve like topping you are we which was by far our best work at the time then we had to have like a lot of weight lifted off our shoulders and we needed a helping hand kind of thing so yeah, we wanted to, we wanted to stick like with the creative side of things i mean with the writing and like the way we portray like the art kind of thing but before we did all that anyway but then we also took care of like how do we distribute everything i mean how does it get worldwide all that kind of stuff so it's so much nicer just to be creative do you know what i mean and like hopefully everything else gets taken care of without any fuck ups, do you know what I mean? So it's nice just to stay like that. So yeah, that sounds You're in the spotlight, logic. Farm. And I think uh, when you listen to So What, uh, you can hear a, a, a still evolving band, and that maybe you're more focusing on your music than ever. Yeah, I don't. Th yeah, I don't think we'll ever stop sounding like an evolving band because I think that's what we'll always continue to do. We never stop growing as human beings. We never hit a point and like this is what we want to do. We're always like you know, in a few years when we do our next album, it'll probably be a lot different because we're different people, listen to different things, have different influences. So, you know, it's just an ever growing thing. I think. Yeah. So let's talk about the so what philosophy. Uh, in December, you dropped uh, the music video for Haunt Me. And in the beginning, there was written, um, so what is a philosophy? Join us. Mm -hmm. Basically, a philosophy is, I think, about to, to fathom, interpret, and understand the world and mm -hmm. human existence. What's the so what philosophy about? Um, I think for me, on, on the deepest sense of the word, for me, it's kind of like, I feel everyone in the world has like a completely different view of the way that they look at life, do you know what I mean? Like completely. And um, the things that influence their opinions to be that way are so like 
there's so many infinite reasons for why someone may believe something and someone may not believe that, do you know what I mean? So, say someone across the world can believe this and whatever, whatever. For example, say like, if someone's like in a war and they've got the left, you've got the right. The people on the right are like, they're willing to die for whatever they believe in, correct? And then the people on the left, they're doing the same. But like, when you really think about it, which one, at the heart of the matter, which one's actually truly right? Like, they believe that they're correct, do you know what I mean? So, the so what aspect to me, it's like, there has to be some room to understand that everyone's gonna have a different way of like experiencing and looking at life than you. Like, do you know what I mean? Like there is actually no ultimate truth. So for example, someone believes in God and someone doesn't, like who am I to say they're wrong? Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know, for me it's like, so what if you like this? So what if I don't? So what if you feel that? So what if I don't, do you know what I mean? So you have to give this like, there has to be some room and some like understanding that, that people go through so much different stuff for for them to be the way they are or like believe what they believe, do you know what I mean? So And I think um like tying it into why why we called the album that the album that is because we were struggling quite a lot to like and, and we always kinda do, we always struggle to like put a like uh, a stamp on on like on like a piece of work what well, well, it's took so long to create and it's took so many like inner feelings and emotions and a, and a long journey to like to like stamp it with like a singular image or like or you know a name um we just felt like quite stressed out by that so like i think calling it so what you know like like a name and a front for it's it's almost like our own version of saying like don't judge a book by its cover because there's so much more inside um than than at face, first like face value kind of thing so um, I think that's like you know that's what shows through the the artwork as well. We wanted to like still maintain like a sleep's look, but to give it like kind of almost like not like a bland look, but you know what I mean. The and then the ins you go you go to the inside and it's full of color and it's and, and it ties in with what Sean's saying like nobody like at face value nobody is really like correct and there's so much more to people deep down I think. And yeah, like the, there's so much that goes into making an album that no one actually knows about. Do you know what I mean, so I mean it takes us three years of, of actually focusing on making an album. But then all around that, we all have our personal problems and struggles and all that that comes with it. And then, but then people get like this quick 40 minutes of music bang like that and they get to judge it so quickly. But actually there's just, you can't even explain what, do you know what I mean? We have to eat, we have to drink water, we have to do yeah, whatever, we get sad, we get happy, like. There's always something deep, d deeper down, it's like, the smoke and mirrors like is the name of the album, but and then like deeper inside is the music. But then deeper inside past the music is us as people. Yeah. And then that's just us people like in the band, and then we go further into our personal lives, and you know, yeah. Then down to our basic needs, and like, there's so much, so many factors and variables that create <clears throat> such a thing. Yeah. So so how so how deep it is exactly what Owen's saying is like, it come you get to hear it so quick and then judge it so quickly. So that's another reason why so what's so great for the album type is like, like how can you actually. Na like label what we've done just in a sentence. You know what I mean, so the so what kind of flips it on its arse and it's like, it, it doesn't matter what we're gonna call it. It's what's inside that really means that has a substance. You know what I mean? And it's also sorry. <laughs> and also, it's it's almost like um, people probably see it as like a message of indifference, but it's not. It's almost like uh, a message of like liberation, just to like let things go that don't matter. Yeah, it could literally translate to let go. Yeah. Okay, so there's uh, also a song on the record called "So What," uh, which did you create first, the um, the re the record title or the song? The record title. The record title. The, it the the part in the song, um, the song got called that. Pretty much one of the last things I think that came was the naming of that song, and the part at the beginning of that song. But I think it works amazingly. Yeah, I also think so. And. Um, when you started writing on, on the record, um, did you also had at first uh, the, the So What title and build everything up, up on it? Sean's thing a l yeah, it, little bit beforehand. It, it was like an idea I had floating around before, like for sure, but it was never like like a concept kind of album, like let's build everything around that, not at all. This is why it kind of like, it felt so right at the time because we were actually feeling a lot of pressure and a lot of stress at the end. Like we had all the album, the album's nearly finished, but we had no campaign, we had no idea or anything. And like, we had So What, like kind of in the bag, we had a few album names, but like, we were like, let's just call it So What. We're like, it doesn't matter what we call it, let's call it So What. So that's how it came about. But obviously in doing that, I had all this kind of like, a few ideas about what it means behind it. 
So then it all kind of like, okay, this is like what it's going to be now. Do you know what I mean? Okay, um, the first single you released was Antisocial, and there's uh, the obvious line, uh, I'm not antisocial, I'm anti-bullshit. And the song closes with the line, uh, thank fuck for headphones. <laughs> so, um, is this the only opportunity, uh, or the only way, um, to put on your headphones and ignore all the, the fucked up noise in the world? Exactly that, yeah. It's actually about like Loz's train journey to like yeah. the warehouse, and if he hasn't got his headphones, he like the the like public transport or just the world in general just drives Loz insane. <laughs> so he's like he needs his headphones. And I don't think it's to be taken like so literally. Like the only yeah, way to doesn't. like cure it is to like stick headphones in. But I think it's just a nice way of being like, there's so much bullshit in the world. Sometimes it's nice to get away. We got maybe it's not headphones. Maybe it's like just going for a walk or something. Like it's more just like an analogy. Like do you know what I mean? Like it's not to be taken so literally. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the world becomes very different when you're listening to music while you're walking in the streets yeah. and when you're not. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely, definitely does. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's also a song called um, uh, Back of My Mind. Mm -hmm. There's a feature with uh, Shapes frontman Griffin Dickinson, mm -hmm. who's actually the son of Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. And it's very different to the Silent Speaks feature from Ollie Sykes from Bring Me the Horizon because it's a hip hop feature. Um, yeah. Who had the idea f for this feature? Um, M Matt kind of had the idea, but the section kind of required that kind of vocal, do you know what I mean? So the part was made, but that section wasn't like finalized vocally. So we're like, it's a perfect spot for a guest and we were not scared to do something so different. So it's not like we planned that, but the way that like the beat and the guitar kind of went, it, it, it almost needed that kind of vocal beat if you will do you know what I mean and he's a great vocalist so and we're friends with him so it just came about like that mm. all right uh, thank one you one of my favorite parts actually I love it it's great yeah and it's, and it's very very different from the um, entire sound a little bit yeah yeah opening up doors man everywhere <laughs> I'll open up that door if you want me to <laughs> <laughs> we'll see But uh, yeah, thanks very much for the interview. Thank you. Uh, I wish you all the luck with the new record and enjoy much. the rest of your tour. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.